just a trip uh, past Route 1 for these teams, and you have your matchup tonight. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Garden Valley against Pegcrest in Central League Boys Across Action. I'm Ben Hoy with Alec Eskin. Jags a little bit of a struggle lately. They lost to Radner. It was a score of 10-3 at the half, and, and Radner not, did not turn back in that game. They put on the Jets against Garden Valley. Yeah, they, re they really did. I mean... Yeah, I mean it was it, it, this it's that short term memory that's the key there. Again, learn your, the lesson I think you've learned there is that you gotta you gotta be mentally ready going into each and every game. It's it costs them against Stogan and I think it costs them against Radner and then you gotta you got you got you're kind of expecting like hey they're gonna, they're not gonna make mistakes and well they those teams just don't make just haven't really made that many mistakes in Scarlet Valley and Radner number one team in District One right now is just playing their best lacrosse they have in a long long time. Now, Pancrest is number one in District 1 and 5A last time, at, at least as pat, as um, recent as last week. Um, I've heard they picked up a little, uh, some losses since, but they're still a very good team that should not be messed with. I don't know, number one team in District 5, I mean, they're, again, really, really good. Be a huge win tonight for Garner Valley. If they, be a huge win, it, win for Garner Valley, they, if they can pick it up. Improve their senior District uh, 1, and they're, they're currently... They're currently Number, I think number fifteen right now. They dropped a little bit since, due to due to some losses. They yes, they're number fifteen. They are at nine. They are at nine five right now after losing to Radner. Now taking a look at Pencrest here, they're a little below us in two A. They are twelve and three. This win would help a lot. Remember, you probably have to win out to get a home game for the Garden Valley Jaguars boys across team at least. We're going to see how the Jags respond after that loss to Radner against Pencrest. Coming up, uh, we will take a break for the National Anthem, and then we'll be back for the start of the game. Whatever. Welcome back to Motor Frank Stadium. We're just about set to be underway for this Central League matchup. Now, here is a big game that just happened a little while ago that will affect some rankings in District 1. The Battle of the Brandywine, Daddytown West and Daddytown East. Now, with Daddytown East winning, if Radner wins out, they probably get the number one seed in District 1. 
yeah, I mean, again, they've been playing really well lately. I mean, they've been, I mean, hey, I mean, Tuesday night proves that. They played really well against the Garner Valley, who's a very, very good lacrosse team. And, and, and I mean, they, right now they're the team to beat, and they have been the team to beat all year. They're currently the defending state champions for 3A. Kennett just played Downingtown West a little while ago. We'll get a score on that because that could affect the ranking substantially as both teams are top 10 in District 1. Kennett being the reigning state runner-up, beat Garden Valley in the state semifinal last year. Um, actually, we play Kennett um, coming up. They, they're going to be a road game. They're going to be, I think, our last game of the season. That's going to be a tough one at Kennett. Yeah, it always is. I mean, but this year they're a little more consistent than they have been in previous years. They did lose to Ridley, who we, who we beat very, who, who we beat, who we beat um pretty handily. Yeah, yeah. pretty handily and pretty and pretty uh, and pretty, and pretty um pretty uh, in pretty good fashion. And and again, Garn Valley, if they if they play like that against Ridley, they, I'm sure, and if can plays the way they did against Ridley, I, I think that that's a very winnable game for Garn Valley. Absolutely, especially since Kennett lost a majority of their team. They still have Zach Holm, a junior who's going to Marquette. Absolute sniper of a player. But they lost their starting goalie. They lost a lot of their attack members, guys like Brock Fantasi now at Arcadia. Uh, they had a guy going to Providence. They, they lost a lot of people. Let's actually go over the goalie matchups tonight. For Pencrest, it's Luke Pyle Balak, And for Garnet Valley, it'll be Drew Keebney. Yeah, again, he's been playing better and better as years gone on. It's again, again, ha again, hasn't been. It hasn't been very easy either for keeping. He's played against a, very, a lot of very good teams, and he's made the most. He's made the most of his opportunities. Detrolio draws a foul on the first pace uh, on the first face off. So Pencrest will start out with the ball at the mo. And again, again, that's a good. That's the start you want for Pencrest every every time. Pencrest passing it around. Kyle Ridpath with the ball, defended by Buzenkel. Buzenkel being more defensive this year than he was last year, putting a lot of effort into the defensive end this year. Usually he would just stay on attack the last few years, but it's good to see um, Buzenkel have versatility in his game, Alec. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's again really, really good to see. And that's going to flag on uh, on Pancras pushing it back, but anyways. Uh, yeah, I think he's he's definitely he's definitely grown to, to more of a two-way player, and I think he again he's done that um and because of losses from um from last year like Sam Mo like Sam Morn again and and someone has to step up and he's been stepping up all year long. It uh, looks like that's going to be a minute, so when, uh, he'll be released probably at the earliest ten fourteen on this foul, or unless Garden Valley scores here. Ryan Nealon with the ball. Glad to see him back. He came back against Radner last game. He came out versus St. Joe's Prep with a hand injury. So it's good to see him back on the field. Um, but hold on, folks. Coach Urso will take a timeout. So we'll be right back after. Welcome back to Moda Frank Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. With the ball is Kai Lopez. They try to force it inside. Pancrest is going to pick it up. That's Liam Fickus. Ball's loose from Colby Poole. Kai Lopez has the ball. Uh, yeah, again, not what you want to do out of timeout, but again, good job by Garn Valley recovering. Nealon shot. Halloran's there. 
off the goalie stick. So the first save of the day for Pyle Ballack. Again, really, really, really good job right there. And wide, wide open Nealon, he's not going to miss those a lot. And again, it's great to have him back. All he cross commits. And, he, and he's, I think on, on the offensive end, he's been, he's been sorely missed all year. It could be a drink of water on offense that they really needed. And it allows Buzenkel to pass to him. That pass a little bit wide. I was going to say, Buzenkel, he's going to have a lot more opportunities for shots now. Because now you have to defend Nealon, not just Buzenkel. Yeah, and he, again, again, it's, it's, having, it's having multiple thoughts on the offense. It's, that's, how, that's, how, that's how good offenses are. They always, always have a ton of options to go to. Pankras with the ball back at the goal. That's Jason Poole, captain for this team. Give it to Brennan Kaut. To Dylan McDougal. Bear Evans defending McDougal. McDougal makes him pass up the ball. Shot. It's a laser from way deep. That was from Jason Poole. First to it is Spencer Tyson, so Pencrest will keep the ball. Yeah, put a lot of mustard on that, but uh, but just wide. And again, good defense there by keeping. I don't know if it was tipped or not. Pool, ball's loose. Evans gets a stick check on him. Now another jag closes in. Pool showing great toughness, but it's not enough as Evans has the ball. Passes it downfield to Kai Lopez. Beats the defender with his amazing speed. Remember, Kai Lopez is a uh, comes in as running back for the varsity football team. Yeah, and again, again, very versatile athlete. Again, a lot of these, a lot of these players are fo play football as well. Northern Valley has, since has turned it over. Yet to Chaz Katz, Danny Hussein, the NYU wrestling commit on him. Pool. Beats the defender off. Uh, beats him off the. Um, beats him off the edge. And so and so far, not a lot of offense from either team. It's a lot, lot, lot of turnovers and. Oof. Safe by Keevney. He's been he's been doing that a lot tonight. He's got so far, Garner Valley's gotten lucky with that. Not allowing any goals because again, a lot of it's because of Keevney. Stays with Pencrest. Seven fifty-seven left to go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, this isn't uh, uh, one one pattern I've seen from Garner Valley this year is that they've started slow to start off the game. Jason Poole beats Keevney to his right hand side, and seven forty eight left to go. It's one nothing Pencrest. Again, that's what happens when you keep giving Pencrest opportunities, and they eventually convert on it. And now they've drawn first blood and get, and and gotten the lead early on. The captain gets the first goal for Pencrest. Now to Trulio. To take the face off. He's 0 for 1 today. Oof. And Pencrest will be 2 for 2 on face offs on the day. And a timeout for Pencrest. We'll be right back after this short break.
Welcome back to Mofa Frank Stadium, ladies and gentlemen. 7.36 in the first quarter. It is one nothing Pencrest early on. Alec, again, this team struggling to get um, any spark of offense off the get-go. Yeah, and they, again, they've just been... Uh, it, it, this is this is apparently we've seen all year. They've started slow and they eventually figure it out. But against good teams, you can't you can't start off slow and and then get going in the second half because when, when you're because 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 against good teams, the the game's already over. I mean against Rainer that was a problem because they at halftime they were down by what eight eight nine. Brennan Couch just made an amazing play. Beat Sean Gallagher off a spin move. Great bounce shot into the corner. Top cheddar. 6.54 left to go. It is 2 nothing. So both captains for Pencrest score early. And then you got hats off to him. That's not, it not, was not easy. Uh, great, great defense there, but just, uh, just, just a great ball place and great shot. Great everything on that play by him. I mean, I mean, again, 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 just Pencrest doing everything right right now. 2 nothing with 6.54 left to go. I think, th oh, that's Kai Lopez in there, in there this time. So they pulled the Cholio from face off. Now it's Kai Lopez. Minjoni makes a great pass to Gallagher. Shot just a little bit wide. That's the other thing. Their shot's been going wide today. They've tried, they've tried going in the, in the, right, the left-hand corner there, but they've been pushing a little too much. Smith to Nealon. to Buzenkel. Buzenkel spin move shot. Just a little bit wide. Nealon the first one to it. But yeah. Luke Mangione will start it off. Yeah, let's see if Garner Valley can convert this time around because again they've been a little wide. But again, 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 they do they do tend to, when they when they start to figure things out they do tend to convert on their shots. Mangione to kneel in shot another one a little bit wide of that keeper's right hand post. Five fifty left to go, and the Jags can't find that spark on offense. They need it quick. And, and again, this this is a problem that they had last night. Nealon, welcome back. Nealon scores his first goal back at the Mo since his injury, and it's two one. Pencrest still leads. Yeah, again, great shot there by Nealon. That eventually one of those is going to go for him. Is able to do just that, and now gets now gets Garner Valley on the board. Great shot by Nealon right there. A lot of credit to him stopping that Pencrest momentum. So Nealon in his return to the Mo scores the first one for the Jags. Kai Lopez back in the faceoff circle. He's one for one today. I think you found your new Fogo guy for next year as he wins it again. He's two for two on faceoffs. Boozenkel. Yeah, he's been pretty good. I think he's he's try. I mean, did he try out last game too? He's tried that a couple games, but oh boy. There beats, we it, go. beats the defender off the edge. 5.24 left to go. 2-1. I mean, just an amazing move by Buzikel using his strength and his speed against the defender. Yeah, I mean, when when Buzikel's right in front of the goal like that, you know that a bad result's coming for the, other, for the other team. And it did, did, it did just like that. Again, Again, very he's a very scrappy guy. We saw the football as well. Played quarterback and, and, quarterback and defensive back. And again, just showing again, just just blowing his way right in front of the net. You get uh, Buzenkel in point blank range of it for a shot. He will convert that every single time, and you saw that there. The game is tied, so the Notre Dame commit equalizes it. Gallagher, he has some space shot just above the bar, and you know he can score those too. Oh, no, absolutely can. He's done that quite a few times. Uh, last time we were here, I think he did that on quite a few occasions. Five minutes left to go in the first two two. Yeah. 
Minjoni tries to chuck it from deep, but makes the smart pass to Buzenkel, yeah, that, who that. will chuck it from deep, and it's just past that right-hand post again. Yeah, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get that. They're trying to bounce the ball at, um, over the goalie's head. I mean, he's uh, n number number thirty-three. Uh, Luke Pyle, Pyle is not not the tallest of guys. Another goal for Garner Valley comes off Colin Smith. 4.34 left to go. The tie is broken, and the Jags get their first lead of the day. Again, great, great job there by, by Colin Smith. Able to, again, and that was also a really nice pass, too. That, that's the kind of execution that Garner Valley has been looking for all year long, and, and, they, and they get it right there. Back in the faceoff circle is Detrolio for Pegcrest. It's Owen Thompson, a freshman. Let's see how Detrolio does against him. And he wins that one very easily. He gets the pass to Busenkel. Shot. Saved by the keeper. Down low. Oof. Almost intercepted. But they do get it into a Pencrest stick. Great spin move. Avoided the hit from Luke Mangione. Yeah, again, that was a nice, really nice save there by, Pen by Pencrest. Shot, and they score. That's a great goal by Pencrest. And they tie it up once again. Yeah. Goals by Cody Woolery. And with 4.07 left to go, it's a three-all game. Again, really, really again, Pencrest, they weren't, they weren't going to... They weren't going to stand that job for long, and they get and they get get Garner Valley right back and tie up this game. It's gonna, I, I got a feeling it's gonna be a close game all the way all night. Detrolio makes quick work of the faceoff. They've tried several um, faceoff guys already. That was Zach Puckett, the captain. Uh oh. He has space. Shot. Gallagher scored. With the log stick, he breaks the tie. 3.53 left to go. 4-3. Again, who better to do it than Sean Gallagher? Again, uh, just open space and no one picks him up, and that's where he's most dangerous. While falling, too. Yeah. That was an extremely yeah. impressive and athletic play. Yeah, it looked like he was tripped, there, tripped up there for a minute, but regardless, he still gets it. Again, again, this is, again, this is what he's been doing all year long. and Again, he's developed that, he's, he's developed that into a fine art. Petrolio has been winning them easily since the two losses early on today. Shot Halloran up high. Stick safe by Co Pyle Bollock. Again, again, that's uh, that was the save Pengrass desperately needed right there. And they and then and they of course they get it. Here's 32 Chaz Cats. Back to Poole, who has a goal today. I think all the goals for Pencrest have come off captains. I think you're right about that. Shot. First to it is Keevney. Great awareness seeing that the one attacker was down behind the goal. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that that, that that helped the post. But again, again, the great awareness by Keevney has been, again, just getting better and better all year long. Keevney gets a pass off before he got hit by Brennan Cout. Again, again, just keep, again, keep, keep Hells in the Miller right here if you're going to Valley. Don't, don't let up. You can't let up against this team. Buzenkel tried to turn past the right post. He does. Shot just over the bar. First to it is the log stick from Pencrest. It'll be Lion Ball. Great play by Zach Puckett. And uh, again, uh, again, again, great, great awareness there by Pencrest. And and I'm not sure about uh, Pencrest may get the field very quickly, and that's what happens. We have, and that's what happens when they when they when they get when they get in that fast transition transition offense. That shot was taken from around the 30 yard line. Absolute rocket by Dylan McDougal. With 2:21 left to go, the game is again 
tied this time at four. And uh, again, 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 if you make mistakes against Pancrest, they're gonna make you pay for it. And and while they're make, they're doing that so far. So with 2:21 left to go, all square once again. The Trulio at the spot. And again, wins it very easily. Although they do get a stick check in there. What a great pass to Gallagher using one hand to get it to kneel in. The pass is wide. 204 left to go. It'll be Lions ball. Yeah, again, a ground ball that was going to be really hard for Nealon to get right there. And, and again, another Grand Valley turnover. And Pancras, go, again, going back on the offensive. Great pass to McDougal. Shot saved by Keevney. Pancras wins it back in the air. And first to it is Chaz Katz. So it's Lions ball, back of the goal. And uh, again, Pancras have been quick to lose balls tonight, and and, there, and again, and again, again, the thing about giving them opportunities to give them too many, they're gonna make you pay for it. All right, so we have our sources. Um, and if you watch the Downingtown game, you know who that source is. Except right before I go into the game update, Pencrest scores. Again, like I said, too many opportunities for Pencrest, and they're making the Garn Valley pay for it. That was by Chaz Katz, and he breaks the tie with one four, uh, 114 left to go. Anyway, the game update was the game we disputed earlier between Downingtown West and Kennett. The winner of that game was Downingtown West. So Kennett is handed another loss and virtually takes them out of the Chessmont picture. Um, and that and that's bad for Kennett because if they lose to Garden Valley, they could plummet in the District 1 rankings. Yeah, and again, they've, uh, it's an up and down year for them. They've some good teams, but they also have lost to some teams they probably have, shouldn't have lost to. Uh, we'll get a score update for you to show how severe the loss was for Kennett um, as soon as we get it from Mitchell. Neal in shot. Haller in the first to it. Uh, yeah, but again, I like that shot, though. Low risk high reward there. 33 seconds on the clock. Booze and kill. Nealon moves to his left. They're going to try to run one more play before the clock hits zero. Pass. Boozenkel look, looking for a cutter. He finds one. Halloran just wide. Stays with Garden Valley as Kyle Smith is the first to it with 9.2 on the clock. They got to hurry. They get it to Minjoni. Boozenkel. With the opposite six sides, save by Pyle Ballack, and that will be your quarter. We'll give you the Downingtown West score um, after the break. It'll be 5-4 Pencrest at the Mo. We'll be back.
Oof. Welcome back. Well, there we go. 5-4. Garden Valley losing to Pencrest. Welcome back. Garden Valley the first to start with the ball as Sean Gallagher resets the offense. Sean Gallagher has changed his role this year. As Coach Mink said again, again um, in the game against Conestoga, he's been... And he's been a defender, but he has been more willing to attack and challenge the keeper in the net. Oh no, he definitely has, and I think that's it's some huge for Garden Valley this year. They uh, both him and Busick have developed themselves into more of two-way players, and and again, and again, it's again with a bunch of lot with with a bunch of seniors from last year leaving. They they really need that. I think it's definitely coming handy for them. Neil and beats one, two defender shot save. Minjoni regathers it. As the keeper couldn't locate where the ball was. The Jags will reset their offense. Nealon looking for a cutter. Finds Howard behind oh. the back. Oh. And it's a save. It hit the side netting. Yeah, but again, great shot though. I mean, it would have one heck of a shot if it went in. But again, good job by Pencrest as score update on the girls game. They're all they're they're playing at Pencrest and they're up by seven, thirteen, six of the half. Shot saved by Keevney. Ten thirty left to go. It's five four. Pencrest gets the ball back. Yeah, yeah, but again, they're they're again they again they're 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 playing really good defense against against Jaguars right now. Shot Pencrest. Scored. It's a 10-16 game. It's now 5-4. Yeah, I mean, again, giving opportunities, and they've gotten a ton of them tonight. They've converted on a lot of them. They're playing really, look really good across right now, and that's why they're up by two. And that, and again, again, going by, they got to figure out a way to get to get back to get back because I mean, you don't you don't want to get down too much against this team. The goal again was by Jason Poole. That's his second of the game. With 10-16 left to go, it's 6-4, Pencrest. False start on the Lions, so the Jags hopefully can regather here with this possession and score a goal. Otherwise, they could be in some trouble, Alec. Yeah, they could. I mean, you don't, again, 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 this is, they tend to do this sometimes. They get down, again, they're a very, very good second half team by the first half. The, it takes a it takes a lot of time for them to feel out what 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 the other team's trying to do and what they're kind of, what kind of defense they're playing. And uh, and I and, it's, and again again against really good teams, they're gonna you're gonna get yourself in a big hole. Here's Ryan Nealon. Passes to Luke Mangione. Boxes the defender out. Passes to Kai Lopez, makes a move to his left side. Shot by Lopez with the opposite stick side. No good. Max Buzikel, the first one to the ball, but it was a close call. Pencrest defender was right there. Again, 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 clo again close, close for Garner Valley. Great spin move by Colin Smith. Passes to Lopez right in front of the net, and they score. That's Ryan Nealon once again. Actually... That is not Nealon. That looks like Luke Mangione. And with 9.16 left to go, it's 6-4. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, again, that's picture-perfect passing. A lot of movement, putting Pinecrest on their heels, and, get, and getting someone to bite and making a mistake. And that's and, and that's what Garvai, that's what Garvai does best when they can do it. That was, that was, that was Luke Mangione again. Just great passing all around, and that's what, and that's what you need to do against these teams. Make the, make the pass, make the good passes, and get them, all, get them on their heels. So they cut it to within one. They they needed what they they needed that goal really bad. I cannot say that enough. They needed that goal right, really bad. Great hit by Detrolio to force the ball loose, but Pancras gets it right back. Nine minutes left to go. It's six five, and Pancras responds right away. Eight fifty nine left to go. It is seven five. Yeah, and again they. That was a face that we won the face off and we turned it over there. That honestly would probably be a good place to use a timeout, but uh, but again, 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 just letting them run and unfortunately doesn't work out. Garnet Valley now they're real, they are again, again, Pancrest now they're really starting to 
to pick to put pick it up right now when they're again just they're playing really good at the cross. It's um until you can say it. I mean hats off to them so far this first half. That was a hat trick by number twenty one, Jason Poole. Keep these passes high. It'll be Pencrest ball, eight forty nine left to go. Yeah, again, Gar again, this these these are the kind of mistakes that's been costing Gar Valley tonight. And Shot off of Keaveney's mask. That could not have felt good. No, but it was a fantastic save nonetheless. Zach Myers with the ball. Passes it to Buzikel. Right in front of the net is Joey Haller, and he makes a move and beats the keeper up high. There we go. That's what, exactly what you need right there. Again, again, that fast transition offense is where Garner Valley does their best work. And and right there, Again, all our goals are coming off of that sort of that sort of play, just moving the ball around a lot, of, and, and just again, just moving around a lot. And now, gun this goes back to within one. Eight twenty-six left to go. Seven six, the Lions lead. It's a high-scoring half. I mean, when I broadcasted the game for Downingtown between East and West, I don't think we got seven goal. We we actually got seven goals combined in the whole game. <laughs> It was yeah. a five to two game. Again, so right. it's very relieving to see some high scoring lacrosse again. Again, again it's a uh, like a pitcher's duel. Great bat away from Garner Valley. Ball's loose. Hussein is on top of it. Keeps the uh, keep away from the Pencrest defender, and it looks like Coach Urso will call timeout. So we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, after this. Thirteen combined goals in the half with 7.58 left to go. It is 7-6. Pencrest leading the battle for Route 1. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ben Hoy here with Alec Eskin as Bear Evans chucks it deep for Max Busenkel. Makes a jumping catch. Goes to his right side. Shot scored! What an absolute laser from Busenkel from the 20. With 7.42 left to go, the game is again tied. Yeah, again, great shot there by Busenkel. From like 10, 15 yards out, able to able to put right past, able to put right past Pyle Bollock and get, and giving Garvai the tie again. To again, that's again taking advantage of opportunities and playing efficient, clean lacrosse, and that's what they just and they've done just that, just that in these last few minutes. So we're gonna put Kai Lopez back at faceoff. He's won the majority of them tonight. Trips a little bit, so Pencrest will win that one. That's Owen Thompson. Flag is out, and that will be on the Lions. Jags will be man up. We'll see how long this is for. We'll see the official call here. Should be on Pencrest, I think. Oh, right? it is on Pencrest. That is for sure. Cross check. That's a minute, so I don't think that's a releasable penalty. Unless there's a goal. 
because because we're not because I mean it's the, it's a safety symbol for locked in, correct? Correct. Yeah. I'd... So yeah. So they're gonna that, that they're gonna so it's gonna be a minute until or or until they score a goal or going about is all right. I should say. <laughs> seven thirty five left to go. It's seven all. And Garner Valley with a golden opportunity to try to break this tie once again, being up a man. There we go. And that's how you do it. Immediately. 7.27 left to go. You just find the open man right in front of the net. Simple as that. Luke Mangione, his second of the game, 8-7 Jags. Yeah, and he's just been a fanta he's been fantastic the entire first this entire first half. This, this is the Jaguar lacrosse I know, Alec. And I, we can get so many places. We, we could probably win states if we want to. But we need to play this type of lacrosse, Alec. Yep, you have to play it each and every time. And that's, and again, Garner Valley, start the second quarter. That's how, that's how they have been playing. Lopez on the faceoff. He wins it. Chucks it high for Buzenkel. And it's intercepted by Zach Puckett. And turned over once again. Here's Mangione looking for his hat trick. He gets it. Luke Mangione extends the lead to two. The Jags' biggest lead of the night with 7-10 left to go. 9-7. Mangione is taking over right now. I mean, the, I mean, le the, these last few minutes, he's been really he's been getting the right spots, being at the right time. Great awareness by him. And again, he's been he's been he's been accurate and efficient. And, uh, and it's great to see the sophomore there start starting to make his impose his will against this team. The Trollio at the circle. He wins it very easily. Gets pushed in the back. Tries to reset and give it away. Finds Halloran wide open. It's abusing Kel to extend it to three. He gets it again! Max Buzikel with his hat trick. Uh, man, 652 left to go, 10-7. Now uh, again, this is what Garner Valley, when they when they're playing the best lacrosse, this is what they do. They make good passes, they find their ways to get to get themselves good shots in front of the net, and that's what they're doing. They're uh, again, again, playing loose, aggressive lacrosse, and that's how they're doing here to start the second quarter. Currently on a 5-0 run right now. Really, 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 really good stuff there by Benjoni and Buzenkel. As Alex said, 5 nothing run with 6.52 left to go. The Trollio wins another faceoff. Low pass for Buzikel. Spins past the defender. Looking for a cutter. He finds one. Shot! Scored! Ryan Nealon! His second of the game with 6.41 left to go. It is now up to four. Six unanswered. What, like three goals in a minute now? I mean, I mean this, this again, they're doing, it, they're doing this against Pencrest, the number one team in, in 2-8. They're, and this is what again. This is the lacrosse Garner Valley we're used to seeing out of them. And and if they can keep playing like this, I mean, they're gonna be they're gonna be a lot of really good teams. Here's Kai Lopez on the faceoff win. Lopez fires seven straight. Unbelievable. Kai Lopez takes it coast to coast. 12-7 with 6.35 left to go. Two in 10 seconds. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I got no words right now. I mean, they're just pour, pouring it on Pencrest. They are not fooling around here in the, here, here in the second quarter. They, they they fixed whatever they need to fix, and they're playing really, 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 really good lacrosse. And arguably, these, these are the best units I've seen from Garden Valley this year. The lead is up to five. The biggest for both teams. It's a foul on Pencrest. Garden Valley ball. Can they extend it to six? Eight? Wait, seven unanswered here? Yes, seven yeah. unanswered. That would be crazy. I mean, hey, I mean, if you can keep playing this, I mean, you're going to score as many goals as you please. No matter what team you're playing. Pass to Andrew Galt. <laughs> they're, taking the, they're taking their time now. They have some, some substitutions. Buzenkel just sitting with the ball. I guess I just want to run some time off the clock. Golt. To Nealon. Passing it around the perimeter. 
They start to cut. Uh oh. Who's he got? Oh! Fires! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Top cheddar from at least 20 yards out. And that is seven unanswered. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, you know when things are going well, that's that's what happens. 20 yards out, top left corner. Great shot by using Cole. Again, again, he's a master of, of of the shot. He he's able to put it in the in the most in the in the most unusual places and right past the goalie and, he, and that's and again, this is part of the reason why Garnval is up 13-7. This is a crazy run for the Jags as they are just absolutely kicking the doors open on Pencrest. Whew. Liam Ballack just can't do anything in net right now. There's no, there's no way to stop it. I mean, the problem is his defense. Uh, the Pencrest defense has pretty much collapsed to start the second quarter. Only five goals in the first, and now in the first six minutes, about you've already got Garvey's gone already got eight, got an eight. So Pencrest will. Finally have another offensive possession. Oh, there we go. And they give it right back up. Here's Corey Urso. Three, jet, uh, three Lions surround Urso. He gets it off to Andrew Galt. There we go. And Urso's been playing a little more defense lately. I mean, and, and he, so far in that role, he's been very, very good. 4.45 left to go. Let's see if they can... Uh -oh. Double Pencrest up, and they can. Nealon, hat trick, eight straight unanswered. 4.39 left to go, 14-7. to seven. And this is more like it. Yeah, this, you can say that again. I mean, I mean, again, this is kind of Garn Valley Cross we were used to seeing, and and now, and hopefully this, 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 hopefully this means we're turning a corner. And you could see Liam Ballack just throw his arms in the air. It's just like, what just happened, guys? We were in this game with them. In fact, we were leading for the majority of it. Yeah, now they, and they there need was that just timeout. A, and there was just a massive collapse. And that timeout, man, that couldn't come soon enough for Pencrest. 4.39 left to go. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 4.35 left to go. 14 to 7. Absolute massive run for um, Jaguars here as Corey Urso has the ball. And now it's... This is kind of similar to the run we saw in, in a, against Emmaus, but even... I don't, we didn't, even Garn Valley didn't score that quick, that fast. I mean, I mean I've never seen, seen this kind of thing before from Garn Valley, where they're just, where they're just really just scoring at will. And again, this is a team that whenever the, whenever they they start they start to figure things out and, and 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 start to make adjustments, they are one of the best teams in the state of Pennsylvania. Absolutely agree. Pass! Oh, oh my gosh! Is that no goal? That is no goal. The flag came first. Yeah, I thought. But that was an amazing shot by Buzikel, which that would have been his fifth of the night. Yeah, I mean. 
Well, I, I think they're going to be talking about here. Is this a goal? I, I I thought goal was pushing the crease, though. That's the thing. Like, well, no, no, no. The, it, it's no, I, a I, penalty beforehand. Yeah, I don't think it was I, a crease thing. Yeah, I'm. Sa- that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So no, I, I'm. Sa- I'm saying when he shot the ball, was he was was he pushed in the crease? All right. I. It's a one minute penalty. That's for sure. Does the goal count? And it looks to be no. So it will stay 14 to 7. Unfortunate for the Jags, but you're still up 7. So that that's the good news. You could be down 7 like the people in uh the red jerseys are. Yeah, I mean again this again Pancras is whatever. I'm not sure what happened, but they just seem to have lost all steam. Haven't scored a goal since the end of the first, and and they really haven't had any possession time either. And then again, this is not what Pancrest usually is. They're usually a very good team. Mm-hmm. Nealon to Halloran. Pass. Oh. Shot. Scored. Min Joni, his fourth. Yeah, this is – he's definitely starting to, to turn some heads here at the Mo. It, it, again, game's on the right spot at the right time. He's been doing this in the, in the second quarter and all night. And By the way, they took out their goalie already. So that goal was not even um, Pyle Ballack. That was Lee, uh, that was uh, Mark Feynman. They they took him out already as he just did not have his second quarter. Yeah, and, I mean, well, and, I mean, it's also – I don't uh, – It's not all on him. Yeah. No, it was definitely the Pencrest defense as well, but – he he did not help the cause. Oh, here we go. Gallagher, second of the night. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is starting to get fun for Garner Valley. Whew. Man, they're just they're they're on fire right now. Again, they're just getting shots at will and they're and they're executing too. Like every like everything seems to go in the back of the net. And I don't I mean, again, this is just this is the type of level of look Garner Valley's starting to get get into a new gear they've never seen before seen before this year. And now, and, and now they're up nine against a number one team in two A. Whew! Crazy. Just Pancras getting pushed around at will. Yeah, there. Garner Valley has gotten everything they wanted in the second quarter and more. Reynolds loses the ball. Brennan Cout has it. They need to score quick. There's three minutes left to go in the second quarter. But you want to get the best shot possible, so they'll reset the offense. Yeah, at least, I mean, at least they've got possession. That's the thing. I mean, they haven't really possessed the ball any of the second quarter. Ball's loose. Evans has it. He's been coming to his own this year too. Again, he's been again he he's been, he's been making a lot of really good defensive plays so far for Garner Valley this year. Evans, he's looking for a shot, but he'll pass it off behind the net. Ball's loose. Boozy Kell has it as it just hit the bar. 2.16 left to go. Whew. Man. This is this is a game. This is one, a game I like to see. Yeah, one heck of a second quarter for the Jaguars. 11, that's going to Pancras 11 to nothing. Uh, again, again, this this usually never happens. I, I I don't even think we we've even seen this at all this year. This, this is Garner Valley taking out their frustrations over that Radner game. Yeah, yeah. Again, this is against a really good team too. You want to, you you want you want to you want to start picking up. And if you want to start get, get playing at your best, play your best going to the playoffs. Gold shot saved by the stick, and that that was the first save in over twenty shots. Yeah, and Ball, balls were loose on the other side, but oh, you know eleven what? straight shots on net, eleven straight goals for Garner Valley. They finally make a save, and that was very needed for Pencrest. It definitely was, but the thing is, they just turned it over. So now Garner Valley has the ball back, and they they could just run out the clock here if they wanted to. Like Alex said, one minute left and change, and the Jaguars. On cruise control against Pencrest. 
And this is and this is just Garner Valley taking pedal of the metal right here. This is really, really taking pedal of the metal. I mean, I mean, this game is. There, there. This is this is getting the territory where you could potentially get running clock. You're, you're, you're only, you're only, you're, you only have three goals away. You very well could. Definitely in the second half for sure. Could you help it in the first half? Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. Can Neil and help that shot? No. No good. Who's first to it? Garnet. Uh oh, Pencrest is. Oh, let's let's see if they can let's see if they can. They chuck it deep with 20 seconds left. Ball's loose. Evlo gets a stick check in there. That Rounds the be. ball away. And Minjonis shakes off two defenders with seven seconds left. Oh. A pass just high of Joey Halloran with 5.2 seconds left. 16 to 7. Uh, I mean, I also got a nine point lead going into halftime. I'm going to chuck it way deep here. Over the net, and that's your half. 16 to 7. At the break, we'll see you after.
Let's let's go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Your score after the half: Garnet Valley sixteen, the Pencrest Lions seven. Twelve straight goals unanswered for the Jags. Uh, absolutely unbelievable performance, Alec. You can say that again. I mean, just. I mean, again, this is this is what they've been doing all year long. I mean, well, I mean, when they when they were on, they can they can really just take it take it to the metal pal take it to teams. I mean, they've been taking it to the Pride Crest Lions ever since the start of the second quarter, up by nine. You can see that score in Gar Valley now, potentially running clock and. Yeah, I mean, again, just just really really good stuff. They're gonna bring back in Drew Keevney for the second half. His work isn't done yet. Pancrest pulled Liam Ballack early. Um, Liam Pyle pa Ballack, pardon me. And they're putting in now um, Mark Feynman. Shoes. It's a Detrolio false start to start the second half. Pancrest ball to start. We're back underway. Here from Glen Mills, PA. And um, it's been a great, it's been a great day in the Garden Valley community. What is? Oh, they got it. Almost a save, but couldn't hang on to the ball. Went right over the line. So immediately, Pencrest responds, makes it a 16-8 deficit for them. Yeah, that was definitely a much needed goal for for Pencrest Lions, and I was. Just about to say, a really, really good day for the Garner Valley community, for at least sports-wise. Softball won 17 nothing over Laura Marion, and boys won 3-2 uh, over Laura Marion on, in their senior day. So both teams pick up the W, and the girls lacrosse team is currently up 11, last I checked, over Pencrest. So they look like they're they're going to win that game right there. And if Garner Valley, if, the, if this game holds as it is, Garner Valley will, will most likely get the sweep. The goal for Pencrest, his fourth of the day, Jason Poole, the, ca the co-captain, has done a great job for the Lions today. The defense not so much as they've struggled in the second quarter. I mean, it's again, it's been a tough game. We, what, we have to see how they adapt, though. Maybe they can rebound. Again, again let's see. But you can't, you can't expect this team like not to respond. Pass, kneel in, shot, just a little wide. And they and they did bring out that they did bring out Feynman again. They're not. They're gonna, it looks like they're gonna roll with him. So it looks like Pyle Ballack's night will be done. Ten forty three left to go. One cutter comes in. That was Booz and Kel. They pass it deep for Minjoni. Spin move, pass to the back of the net. Cutter Ooh. found, Cutter scores. What a great cut by Joey Halloran. Makes it 17-8 with 10-28 left to go. They've been making those cuts all night and... Yeah, and, and again... Yeah, and again, it's just really, really... I mean, just... Again, just... just Per play up here from Garner Valley again. Great cuts, great pass, great shot. Three, three bullet points there, and that's that leads to the Garner Valley goal, and now puts themselves up by up back by nine. Ooh, did he lose his the stick? Detrolio lost his stick off the stick check. Gallagher makes a great hit on um, number thirty-two, Chaz Katz, but Pencrest still keeps the ball. Katz actually wide open there. They missed him. It was a great cut by Cats. And by the way, the girls' game just went final. They just beat Pencrest twenty to eight. Oh boy, Pencrest wasn't bad, were they? No, they they're a good team. They're they're number, I think they're number three in district. And they're 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 number three in three A. I can actually check that right now. But yeah, I mean that and that that that'd be a huge win for the girls' across team. Another goal for Pencrest makes that 17-9 again back to eight. So game not over yet. 
yeah, but as I was saying, that's gonna be they were the three they're in the currently number three seed in three A. That's how it's gonna change after that game, but Garner Valley again, that's a huge win for them. Another great goal by McDougal cuts the Pedcrest deficit to eight. Almost back to nine. It was a great shot by Nealon. First one too is Joey Halloran. Showing great speed and athleticism. Joey Halloran was a tight end wide receiver for the football team. And again, a lot of speed there. I mean, and again, very athletic. And again, again, he can show it across all the sports. He was, he was, he was, a, he was essentially goner today uh, for football in the fall. And again, very, very, again, he was really, really, really good for them. And again, he could, he could have easily, go, he could have gone to college for that too. He also gives back to the Garner Valley community. He helped the Garner Valley Bocce team to a great record this year. The Garner Valley Bocce team um, is part of the Special Olympics program, and Joey did a great job volunteering for them this year, along with um, two other lacrosse players, Sean, um, Shane Reynolds and Ryan Nealon. Yeah, again, oof. But anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, He's been. He gets really, really involved. And by the way, they're 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 they are currently undefeated in the last two years. Pass, shot, around the corner. First one to it is Garner Valley. They're putting the pressure on Pancrest with 8:24 left to go, trying to make it nine again. Your goal for Garner Valley again is to make this game go quick, get that running clock. Yeah, again, you don't want to be lo here longer than you have to. And, Nealon. and again, just again, just keep scoring if you want it. Minjoni gets sandwiched in between two defenders. Pencrest wins the ball back. With the ball is Co Cody Ooh. Woolery, who has a goal today, but it's given right back up to the Jags. Goal. Back of the net. Looking to the Right hand side of the keeper with Halloran. And it's off a Garnet Valley stick. So the team from media will get the ball right back. Yeah, but again, uh, they, they have they've 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 definitely stopped the bleeding. Keeper comes out of the net to the 40-yard line, passing it off, but the ball is loose. One stick check away from a goal there. The the keeper stationed at the 25, Alec, if you take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Ball's loose. I think Pencrest comes up with that one. Garner Valley gets it back, and Feynman will make his slow walk back to the... Uh, inner circle. Yeah, and, uh, they, and again, this is, uh, again, just Garner Valley really, really playing, playing good, good all around so far. I mean, again, again, they're so starting, they, and once they get started to figure things out and get going, this is, this this is, this is the kind of style of play you, got, um, you, you often see. Mascolo. Ball's loose. Scooped up by Golt. No trouble getting that one back. Our next broadcast will be this Saturday, a 10 a.m. game. So bring your coffee, folks. It'll be Girls Across Senior Day against Owen J. Roberts. Currently the number one team in District 1, with number two team, pardon me, with an undefeated record. Conestoga just, Alex just reminded me, Conestoga just passed them for number one, but still a very good team and has not won a game by less than double digits. Yeah, and they, again, they've been... Oh, man. Whew, what a shot by Buse and Kell. Buse and Kell scores again. That's his fifth. 6.02 left to go. 18-9. to And again, again, really hard shot. Wrap, wrap around 15-yard shot. Right bouncer right over the goalie's head and now going to back up by nine. That they're not they're not necessarily outscoring Pencrest now, but they're but what they're, what they're doing is they're keeping them at arm's distance. 
So they're scoring a goal when they need to, and that's kind of, and that's again waste some more time. And that's the kind of style of play you want. The Trollio grounds the ball away from Pencrest. Mad scramble for the ball. He's got it. Let's see who comes up with it, and it'll be Sacamondi. Ball's loose again, tripped up by a Pencrest stick. Flicks it back up into the air. Great hit to get the ball loose, but it's still loose. And winds up in a Garner Valley stick behind the back pass. Halloran, shot, score. Oh my goodness. Been doing that all night long, and uh, now Garner Valley extending lead to double digits, and whew, Halloran just playing, again, playing like Joey Halloran, the Salisbury commit. That's his hat trick. 5.32 left to go is 19-9. to Petrolio. At the spot. Snaps it back, just like he did in uh, football season as a center. All Delco center also. And, yeah, I mean, all Delco, Saren, all Delco wrestler, too. I wanted you to win wrestler. Colin Smith. With 5-10 left to go in this third quarter, it's 19-9. Get it to Ryan Nealon. Looking for 20 goals today. Both the boys and the girls would have 20 goals today against Pencrest if they scored this next one. Oh, the pass is a little bit wide. They chuck it up in the air, and first two, it's Colin Smith. Lopez looks for a cutter. And the keeper's left-hand side goes behind the net. And it and looks like they're just going to pass it around. They're not going to, it looks like they're content with keeping the ball. I mean, I mean, I guess why not? I mean, why would you give more Pencrest more chances than they, than they, than, than you, than you want? Nealon shot, bounces high. First to it is Kyle Lopez. So 4-10 left to go. 19-9. It'll be a timeout, Coach Urso. So first timeout of the half for the Jags. We'll be right back after the short Ball's loose from Smith's stick as we resume here from the Mo. 3.59 left to go. 19-9, a 10-point lead for the Jags. Looking to sweep Pencrest on the night. Shot. 
by Poole, who already has four tonight. 3.45 left to go. Almost beat Keevney again. This time it's just a little wide. Well, that was all, that was almost a nice pickoff there, too. Poole, a little bit to the right side. First there is Brennan Cout. Yeah, every, I mean, everything tonight tonight for Garner Valley, at least sports community-wise, has been coming up Garner Valley. I mean, it's been, I mean, uh, stuff has been fun. Um, it's a shame we only, we only got to broadcast one of the games. Uh, unfortunately, well, I wasn't able to see the boy the um, baseball game today as I was taking in, I was taking the AP stat exam. Yeah, unfortunately, well, for... To, there, there's a double-edged sword for me. Is I was not taking the AP stat exam. The There's a flag on the field. But um, the other side of it is I am not AP material, <laughs> Alec. I mean, it's... Not uh, everyone is, though. No, not... Very few people are. It's not... It's not fun. It's definitely a... I mean, it's... it's de those are definitely our classes, that's for sure. There's a flag on the play. And it will be on Pencrest. That's one minute. For a cross check. So that will be on. Brennan Cout. The midfielder. 252 left to go. Jags will be man up. Looking to get this to 11. But honestly. You could just try to take your time on this penalty. There's 246 left. Kill off a lot of clock Alec. Ooh, and uh, well. You could score like. You could just score like you did there. That was again Manjoni. <laughs> Luke Manjoni, another goal with two forty two left to go. It is twenty to nine. So both teams scored twenty on the day. And, and uh, one more goal away from running clock. I mean, hey, I mean at this point you might as well get the goal as quickly as possible. Another goal for Garner Valley, 226 left to go. It is now 21 to 9. Alec is dealing with a little bit of a creature in the press box that decided to get in our windows. So it'll be just me for a minute. Shane Reynolds with the goal, 21 to 9. First goal for Reynolds of the day with 2.26 left to go. Pikers passing it around with two minutes left to go. As they win the faceoff. But it is running clock and there is no stopping it. So fourth quarter will be quicker than a bullet. Try to turn the corner. Shot pull. No good. 140 left to go. Goal by Pencrest with 117 seconds left to go. One minute 17, pardon me. Makes it 21 to 10 in the third quarter. But again, clock's still running, and now Garner Valley, uh, again, up 21 to 10. This is, my, this is one of the highest scoring games I've seen all year, and the, that would be the third goal of the day for McDougal. Yeah, I don't think Garner Valley's actually scored 21 all year. Yeah, yeah, they actually have, and I don't think they've cracked 20 yet but until tonight. Oh, 
they flick it off. It's number 31, Declan McGuire, as they start to put some of the backups in. Ooh, what a spin move that Gallagher. I, I do think McGuire starts, though, so not everyone's out yet. Actually, they're keeping most of the offense in, too. So Urso, Smith, Buzikel, they're all out there. See it. And and right now they're they're not they're not making mistakes and it looks like they're just gonna they're gonna hold the ball yeah actually well no shot save it was contested on the net by Kai Lopez that will be your third quarter Ryan Liddy will be on for the fourth um, I'll be on for sign offs we'll see you then we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Moda Frank Stadium. Ryan Liddy, along with Alec Eskin, Ben will be taking a break for the fourth quarter. So you're, I don't, I don't, I don't want to use the word you're stuck with me, but you're stuck with me. Uh, the Jags lead it by a score of 21 to 10. Here as we are set to be in the fourth quarter. Looks like the Trollio will be back on for the faceoff. And, uh... And, and quite a game for tonight for Garner Valley. Not the, again. Again, they've been doing every ever since the first quarter. They've been doing everything right. And now the twenty-one ten leader and are looking to cruise to a big win, which would definitely which will definitely push them up the standings. That it would. As Tyler Ryburn has the ball right now, gives to Kyle Lopez. And again, let's see if let's see if Gar Valley can 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 do this. Lopez gives behind the behind the net, takes it right back in the end zone. Lopez tries to press, makes a spin move, good pick, set by the Jags there, and instead he gives it up to Colin Smith. Hey, might as well keep passing around. You've got running clock. Why not? And and so most of the stars are still out there, but I would have had to imagine that soon the back, backups are going to come in here for, for both teams. I would think just for Garnet Valley, if you're Pencrest, you want to get your guys some work, even though you're down a lot. As turnover by the Jags, ball was saved. And number 19, Woolery, or Cody Woolery, rather, my mistake, will take it up for Pencrest. Here's number 13, Dylan McDougal. He has three goals today. And McDougal at the 30-yard line. And ever, and ever since the first quarter, Pencrest has only scored three goals. And none of them came in the second. I think they've scored five. So they were up 5-4 at the end of the first. I thought they were up 7-5. No, they were up 5-4 at the end of the first. Then it got to a 7-5 lead, and then the Jags went on the run. No. 
Maybe. Yeah, yeah, they were, because I remember looking up, and uh, our PA announcer has told me Dylan McDougal with a goal for Pencrest, his fourth of the ball game. And Sam Detrolio will come back into the face-off circle for the Jags. Detrolio, the Cabrini commit. Also an old Delco center in football and two-time state qualifier in wrestling. So pretty distinguished athletic career here at Garner Valley. Okay, he's going to leave a lasting legacy here at, here at the Mo and, and in the wrestling gym. Kevin Green goes down with the ball. Great stick check by Colin Smith to try and get it back. He will, and the Jags retain possession and will reset. Here's Andrew Gold. Bolt gives to Lopez. Lopez at the G, marking the goal line. Lopez being defended very heavily. I like it like from Pancras playing playing your hardest till the till the clock hits zero. You can't ask for anything more if you're the Pencrest coaches down at a point. I think that I think the the largest they've been down has been twelve or thirteen, and they have continued to play hard, even though they've been down that much. Yeah, I mean you're right. I mean yeah, I mean they're not they're not going away easily. Here comes the oh. shot, and that's going to be a score. Looks like Tyler Ryburn in there. Andrew Gold. I thought I saw twelve. May have been looking at the wrong person. So I believe it was. Uh, I think it may. I think it was Gold. It was Gold. I, I was looking at someone else pressing, but he was. But Ryburn seems to be looking for a pass rather than a shot. He he is in the yeah he is in the game he is uh, uh, again it looks like Garner Valley now starting to pull. Their starters. Corey Urso stays on the field, though. Along with a couple other starters. Joey Halloran looks like he's on the field as well. No, that's Andrew Gold. There is a shot in the score for Pencrest, making it a 22-12 to ball game. We've got a little back and forth here. Pencrest trying, I guess, not to... Lose by double digits. I mean, that's got to be their only their only point right now. And 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 uh, again, again, good, 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 good job here by Garner Valley, and not they're not they're definitely not let they're not. Uh, no, he's going to line up right now, and that's exactly what you want to see. Dylan McDougal with his fifth of the ball game. He scored that goal. Now it's run down to six minutes and ten seconds remaining in the ball game. Jags win the faceoff, and that was Chris Faith being defended very heavily. Ends up getting the ball out of his stick towards another Granite Valley player. That is Kai Lopez. Lopez presses, shot, and the score. <laughs> Quick press there from Lopez to make it a 23-12 to ball game here with five and a half minutes left. And the Jags just keep tacking it on. For every goal that Pencrest has scored, the Jags have also scored. Yeah, pretty much ever since the start of the third quarter, they've been Keeping up, they've been they've been keeping Pencrest's arms length, and then eventually, towards the like right about the end of the third quarter, they got the running clock. And like you said, keep just keep just just keeping up with them. Whenever they get a goal, we get a goal, and and again, back keep going back and forth, back and forth. Face off is back underway, Ooh. and we're gonna have a possibly a flag there. No flag. 
and the ball will go Pencrest's way. We will get you the Garnet Valley Sports update in a minute. Yeah, we've we we've, we've um all all teams have won today. Both baseball and softball beat Laura Marion. Boys with um of course the of course the uh baseball team of their senior day. So a good overall good day for them. And now and they're again they're looking at themselves to get prime spot in, play, in district one playoffs. They're currently the seventh seed right now, if I'm not mistaken. They are currently the six, I believe. Really? Yeah, I mean they're they've been playing really really good baseball so right now. I will confirm that. They are the sixth seed currently at ten and three is the baseball team beating Lower Marion getting their tenth win of the year by a score of three to two. Good senior day win over a league opponent. As now we run down to three minutes and 40 seconds left after a great save by Drew Keeveney. And uh, again, there's, they're looking. Again, but all, again, all, Black, Black Garner Valley sports, the, the spring season has been very, very good for, to, to the Garner Valley team so far. I mean, all of them look like they're going to get at least a home game and, and there's, and, and uh, a lot of them are, are in the mix for, are, are going to be in the mix for a bye. Of course, the baseball team will have the best chance at a bye because of the less teams making the playoffs in baseball. Only 20 teams make the playoffs as opposed to the 24 in softball and lacrosse. So the boys team will have the best chance at a bye. I think they need to get a top 10 seed for a bye. And... Or actually, a top 12 seed, my mistake. There is a shot in the score by the Jags. No, that was a penalty. Oh, a penalty. <laughs> I saw a bunch of Pencrest players running off the field. Figured it was a shot in the score. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, you can only assume that tonight. Again, Garner Valley, 23, goal, 23 goals. That says a lot about how the offense has performed tonight. And... Actually, both teams, both boys and girls, have scored a lot. And again, both again, both Pancras teams are very, very good. Boys are number one, two A, and then the girls are number three in in three A. Well, at least at the moment they're gonna. The most likely they will drop after tonight. All of the Pancras te spring teams have been good. Not not named the softball team. The baseball Pancras team was pretty good this year until they lost to. The eventual, until they eventually lost to the Garnet Valley Jaguars by a score of eight to four at Pencrest in that game. So they have been on a little bit of a downward downward slide since then. Yeah, and uh, and uh, again, a loss can really it can it can um it can rile you a bit. Uh, but uh, so far, both Garnet Valley teams, both baseball and softball, hasn't really riled them because because again, both both teams lost yesterday, and next day both of them came out with a win. There's a shot in the score. That's going to be by what looks like Joseph D'Ancona. Rather, Tyler Ryburn. I saw 2-2. Two -two. It was rather 1-2. As now we can rerun down to 55 seconds left in the game. A very fast-moving quarter. The benefits of running clock. And... Again, that's again with throwing clock. Uh, game moves, moves pretty fast, and we're just over thirty seconds away from a win. Game Garnaval game back in the W column with a pretty with a with a dominating victory over Pencrest again. Again, very really, very very good team in District One, and this is a huge win for Garnaval Valley tonight. All right, welcome back. Ben Hoy here with 16 seconds left to go. Thank you, Ryan, for a great fourth quarter as usual. Faith is going to hold the ball here with nine seconds left. The Jags are going to win by 12 here today. Ball is loose. But it will not matter ultimately as clocks hit zero. Your final score here from the Mo. Jags 24, Pencrest 12. 
Pencrest, the number one team in 2A, has fallen to the Jaguars. They go to 12 and 4. The Jags will go to 10 and 5. Again, really, really good, good night for the Jaguars here. After struggling in the first quarter, they're able to fight through that adversity. Poured on to Pencrest and scoring 19 goals in the last three quarters while only holding Pencrest to eight. Again, just really, really, really good play offensively from the Jaguars tonight. This is the best I've seen them, at least out that, in that end of the field all year long. So that will be it from us for the Mo today. This is, by the way, the final regular season lacrosse game at home for the Jags. So if they win out, we will see the boys lacrosse team in the playoffs. If not, we will try to travel to as many playoff games as possible. For Ben Hoyt, of, pardon me, <laughs> from Alec Eskin, Ryan Liddy, I'm Ben Hoyt saying so long. Let's go Jags. Good night.